Hello friends, my name is Rachel, welcome back to my channel, and today we're going book shopping. There are several books that have been coming out throughout the month, and now that they've all been released, I can finally go to the bookstore and hopefully I can find them all. If I can't find them all, then I'll just get the ones that I am able to find and we'll see how we do. Let's go. sit on the floor from now on. It's way more comfortable. Hello! I am back. As you can probably tell, it's the next day. I live out in the middle of nowhere and every time we go to the bookstore it's basically a half day trip if not a little bit more. So when I got home I didn't feel like filming a book haul but that's what we're gonna do right now. I managed to find all of the books that I came for except two so I think that's probably a pretty good result. It's mostly fantasy. Two of the books that I came for were like mysteries. I got one mystery, one historical fiction, and the rest are all fantasy, which I'm okay with. I need some good fantasy in my life. There's not a lot of good fantasy lately, so I hope that these books will all deliver. So without further ado, let's jump into the book haul. Book number one is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. The premise of this book is that the main characters are like 80 years old and they live in a retirement home and they get together to gossip and try to solve local murders. And that's what sold me. I actually found this book in another video and when I heard the premise I was like, I've never heard of another book like this. I'm gonna try it. I really hope that it delivers. I've kind of flipped through it and glanced at the writing style and I'm not super crazy about the writing style. It seems a bit odd, but I hope it will deliver. Moving on to the historical fiction that I bought, we have The Light of Luna Park by Addison Armstrong. Well, the main character in this book is a nurse and she's heartbroken because she keeps delivering premature babies that die because there is no incubator that can keep them alive. And the premise of this book is that an incubator is invented in Luna Park, New York in 1926. I had never heard about incubators being invented or used in 1926 and I love the 20s so that's even better. And then the second part of this book, it's a dual timeline historical fiction. Um, it takes place like 25 years later, so around 1950, I guess, or the end of World War II. And the other character is struggling. Her mother has just died. Her marriage is falling apart. And then she, apparently she uncovers something that makes her question everything she thought she knew about her mother. So I'm more excited about the first timeline, but we'll see how well they're, we they're woven together. I'm not a big fan of dual timeline historical fiction, but I think I will definitely learn things that I didn't know by reading this book. Moving on now to fantasy, and you guys got a sneak peek of this book earlier, and that is Dark Shores by Danielle L. Jensen. Now this is YA. This is the only YA book that I picked up, and I'll admit it was the cover that did it for me. I am a sucker for books with sailing ships. Now I did read a review that said this isn't like 
swashbuckling pirate type story. There's a lot of political intrigue in here, which is fine. I like political intrigue and since I'm going in knowing that already, I don't think that will be an issue. The main character is a sailor on a ship and her crew gets captured by this conniving type character who also knows secrets about the other main character, so they're basically forced to work together to avoid the secrets coming out. That kind of thing. It, the summary is kind of vague, but I'm hoping it will be good. I really, really want to love this book, but I have to admit I'm a bit terrified. And the reason I'm terrified is because this is YA, and even though I love YA as a genre, and I write YA, I have to admit I have fallen a bit out of love with YA lately. And that is because a lot of the YA books seem to be the same. They're all retellings, they all have the same tropes, the characters are less than you would like them to be. Now this obviously is not a retelling, or at least doesn't market itself as such, so I don't think it will suffer from that problem, but I am worried that it will suffer character-wise, plot-wise, but mostly probably character-wise, like a lot of other YA has done recently. Um, this, I'm, we'll get into the problems as I see it with YA at, at a later date, but yeah. The next book on the list is The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst, and I've actually already read this book. I really liked it, but I didn't think I liked it enough to put it on my bookshelf, so I actually donated my copy, and then I realized what a mistake that was, because I do actually really like this book. And so I got another copy, it is going on the bookshelf, it has earned its place there, it is staying. The premise of this book is that there are five heroes who defeated the evil necromancer Eklor 25 years ago, and ever since then they're like legends, they're heroes, they're respected, but they've all kind of gone their separate ways and lived their separate lives. And the main character Kreia lost her husband in the last battle with Eklor, and she is collecting bones and using them in forbidden magic to bring her husband back to life for short periods at a time. The problem is that she can't get very many bones because after what Eklor did using them to power like undead soldiers and like monsters and abominations, bones are always destroyed after somebody dies. So Kreia is like, well, I know one place for sure that I can get a lot of bones, and that is the battlefield where they last fought Eklor because it's been walled off and nobody can go in there. So she and her friend go in there to get bones. Her friend reluctantly agrees to help her, but while they're there, they discover evidence that suggests that Eklor may not be as dead as they all thought he was, and then they're faced with the dilemma, do we rise up and try to f defeat Eklor again? And they're like, we don't really want to do that. We defeated him 25 years ago, or thought we did. We have moved on. We're not, we're not as young anymore. We've got lives. We don't want to get involved again. But of course, nothing is as easy as it seems, and I don't want to say any more without spoiling anything, but this book is really good. It's character-driven. I love the characters in this. The plot is also amazing, but it's the characters that really sold me on this, and I kept thinking about them, and that's what made me be like, you know, I really should pick up another copy of this book. So it has earned a place on the shelf, and that is as high a praise as I can give a book. Having read The Bone Maker and loving it, I also recently read Sarah Beth Durst's book Race the Sands. It was amazing. I absolutely loved it, and I will talk about that in another video. So it is no surprise that I had to buy The Queen of Blood, also by Sarah Beth Durst. This book came out before The Bone Maker and Race the Sands, and because I both loved each of them, I wanted to give this book a try. I believe it's part of a trilogy. This is the first book in the trilogy, the Queens of Renthea series, and the premise is that in this world everything has a spirit, and these spirits are malevolent, and they want to rid the world of all humans. The only person standing in the way is the queen. She alone possesses the power to stop these evil spirits, but of course queens are only human, so she has a group of young women that are training to be her heirs, and one of them gets involved with a disgraced champion who is in exile, and he is going to join her on this journey to try to find out the source of the spirit's restlessness. So I have high hopes for this. All of the books I've read by Sarah Bedder so far have been amazing, so I fully expect this book to be as well. The next book I got is The Coward by Stephen Aryan. This book gives me a little bit of Game of Thrones vibes in that the main character defeated an ice lich or something. Like it, it makes me think of the Night King or the, the White Walkers. I'm not sure what they're called. 
I don't know anything about Game of Thrones except what I've picked up on the internet, but it did make me think of that a little bit. And the premise is that it kind of reminds me of the Bone Maker and that this main character is a hero. He went on this quest and he came back alone. They succeeded in defeating the Ice Lich, but he was the only one that apparently survived. But now something is stirring in the north. There's ice coming down. It's covering the lands and everybody's looking to him to solve this problem. Like, hey, you're the hero. Go be a hero. But he's like, I don't want to be a hero. He's actually a coward, hence the title. And he's like, I don't intend to risk my life for anybody. I really hope that the main character, of course, rises to the occasion. I think he's probably going to be a complex character. I think there's probably going to be reasons why he feels the way that he does. I'm curious to see what actually happened during the battle that came before with the Ice Lich. But I just think it's interesting when you've got heroes that have done a heroic thing and then that's over with and now something else happens and they're like you know what I'm done I've done my part I'm not gonna do any more and in this case the character either views himself as a coward or really is a coward I don't know which until I read the book I suppose but I love books like this where as with the bone maker there's a story that came before that you don't really get to read about you're told about it you know about it but it's kind of like there was this prequel that it wasn't written because this is the first book but it feels like it could get a prequel or it needs a prequel or just I just love the idea of the story that came before and now we're continuing that and this is apparently part of a series so if it's good I will definitely be picking up the next one and last but not least we have Seven Deaths of an Empire by G.R. Matthews. Now this is another type of story that I am a complete sucker for, stories about an empire. It doesn't have to be an evil empire, it just has to be an empire. And in this story, apparently, the emperor has just died and they're in the process of bringing his body back to the capital. There's all these sort of machinations dealing with the heir, people trying to assassinate them, thieves, politicians, all that good stuff. And obviously, I expect there's seven deaths in the cover. It says something about seven deaths, seven lives, and then the fate of the Empire is resting on all of those things. So I hope this is really good. I have been disappointed so many times in the past with fantasy. I would really love to have a good Empire-themed story. I don't know, honestly, when I'm going to get around to reading all of these books because I have so many on my TBR already. But I will read all of these books and I will let you know what I think of them. So that is the end of this book haul. Those are all the books that I bought. I will be sure to read them all and let you know what I think of them. So you can look forward to those videos in the future. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!